He's introduced legislation to protect students and vulnerable Ohioans. A conversation with State Senator Michael Skindle, next on Ohio in Focus. Hello, I'm Mike Rao. Welcome to Ohio in Focus, the program that brings state government to you. We are joined today by State Senator Michael Skindle of Lakewood. Senator Skindle represents the 23rd Senate District. Senator, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Mike. Let's uh, talk about some bills that you've introduced in the uh, General Assembly this year, beginning with Senate Bill 270, which deals with the disabled population in Ohio and protecting them. Can you talk a little bit about how you first came up with this idea? Sure. Um, it was brought to attention to me by a news report in the Cleveland area. Uh, an investigative reporter, Ron Regan with Channel 5 in Cleveland, had looked and actually tried to get records from uh, um, the surveys done by the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities of the providers of uh, services to folks with developmental disabilities. So uh, if somebody has cerebral palsy and they're, they're at home, they will have uh, some service providers to provide aid at the home. Uh, our Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities um, checks in on those providers to make sure they're doing the right thing and they have certain things that they have to comply with under state law. Uh, when uh, Mr. Regan looked at this, uh, 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 around the state of Ohio, he found that uh, over 1,500 uh, compliance surveys were done of these service providers. And of those 1,500 compliance surveys, there were uh, over 600 um, uh, negative findings uh, of service providers. Uh, the worst thing he found is that the records were very difficult to get uh, from the state agency. So the bill I have introduced is to make those uh, records available to everybody in the public. Uh, the Department of Developmental Disabilities under my bill would be required to post these reports online so that anybody at home can go on their computers and look up um, the compliance surveys done of each of the service providers uh, in the state of Ohio. I can see this being a really big issue if you have your family member and you're looking for the right provider for your loved one, you would want to get them the best possible provider to care for them and to not be able to get that information has to be very frustrating. Right, uh, and you want to know if uh, that service provider had uh, difficulties with folks uh, stealing from um, uh, the individuals or uh, there were instances of sexual abuse or other physical abuse, you would want to know that. And uh, when you go online, you can look at the uh, surveys to determine whether any of that had happened. And this is a bipartisan bill. It's right? a bipartisan bill. I have uh, uh, introduced it with a uh, legislator from the Columbus area. Uh, and uh, in addition, the governor recently brought it forward in his uh, uh, budget uh, uh, bill recently introduced in the General Assembly. So you think that something good will come out of this, that there will actually be some legislation or rules put in place that will change things? Yes, there is broad uh, support for this legislation, uh, 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 both by the industry, uh, by the De uh, Department of Developmental Disabilities, and uh, by Democrats and Republicans in the Ohio legislature. Move on to another bill that you've introduced, Senate Bill 266. Now this deals with uh, seclusion rooms for kids who are in school. What, what specifically would this bill do? Well, uh, for many years, there was nothing regulating the use of restraints on students in school or the use of seclusion rooms uh, in students uh, in school. And what is a seclusion room? So a child with autism or a child that is misbehaving, um, sometimes the school would isolate them in a room uh, until uh, they calmed down. Uh, and there was no state regulation uh, regarding these seclusion rooms or the restraints. Um, 
and the Department of Education was called into the Columbus school systems and they discovered uh, multiple issues. There was one instance uh, reported by the Department of Education where a young girl was isolated in a seclusion room, was not checked on. She actually disrobed and defecated in the seclusion room and nobody was checking in on her. Um, so the Department of Education came forward with a set of rules to regulate the use of restraints and the use of seclusion rooms. The problem is, is that does not apply to all schools out there. So it applies to public schools, but it does not uh, apply to the STEM schools. It does not provide uh, to the Catholic or Lutheran or Jewish schools, and it does not apply to the charter uh, schools that are out there. The legislation I have is to make sure that those rules and regulations are applied to all schools uh, that are teaching our, our young uh, children. When you talk to people about this issue who aren't familiar with it, do you, do they, are they surprised that those rules aren't already in place and that this problem exists and hasn't really been addressed? Uh, they are surprised and in fact the first rules in Ohio that came in place only came in place about a year and a half ago. But we need to make sure those rules uh, apply not only to the public schools but to all the schools out there. Uh, and, and that's very important for the protection of our children. And after that, we need to look as to uh, the state policy overall about the use of restraints and seclusion mm -hmm. rooms and to whether uh, those uh, um, ty type of measures are actually needed in the state of Ohio. Let's shift gears a little bit to uh, an issue that um, you know, a lot of people probably haven't thought much about but they're familiar with the product, and that's uh, microbeads. You just introduced a bill dealing with something that's found in, in things we use, probably a lot of us use on a daily basis. All right, microbeads are plastic waste, and where do we find them? Uh, they are used as exfoliants in facial scrubs, in hand soap, in toothpaste. They are plastic little beads, uh, very, very tiny, uh, and we have them in everyday personal care products. Uh, you go to many of the stores, you can purchase these. The problem is, is when you wash your hands or scrub your face with these products, those little plastic products go down our drain and they go to our wastewater treatment plants. The wastewater treatment plants do not remove them uh, from uh, the water stream and they're flushed out into our rivers and into the lakes. Uh, Two years ago, a group of scientists out of New York um, did an investigation on our Great Lakes about these plastic, uh, uh, this plastic waste, the microbeads, and they found out that these uh, beads are settling in large quantities just uh, below the surface of the water of Lake Erie, of Lake Michigan, of Lake Superior, Lake Ontario. Mm -hmm. The fish think that they're um, uh, fish eggs, and the birds think they're fish eggs. Wow. Uh, the problem is the microbeads are plastic. They are toxic themselves. Uh, but the plastics also attract the toxins that are already there from industrial waste, um, uh, agricultural waste, and other type of uh, uh, toxins. They attract it, and it collects it on the microbeads. The fish eat that and then become toxic, and we go fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's... Uh, uh, it, it impacts our, our fishing industry here on the Great Lakes. Uh, so my bill would actually ban the sale of these products with the, the plastic microbeads. I want to read this number directly off here so I get it right because I was surprised by this number. A study found that there are 356,000 microbeads found in one 4.2 ounce tube of, of a type of facial cleanser. That is a lot. <laughs> and that is all going into our lakes uh, and our rivers and sitting there. And uh, it's being eaten by fish and birds. Uh, and it, it's uh, very toxic to us. There is an alternative. They use, actually, some companies use natural items to do the exfoliation, such as ground walnuts or ground coconut shells. Um, and uh, we need to get industry away from these plastic products, this plastic waste, and use the more natural products so it's not harmful to us, it's not harmful to the environment. Some other states are also looking at this problem and doing legislation, correct? Yes, uh, so the state of New York uh, just introduced legislation several months ago. Uh, Ohio uh, now, uh, under the legislation I sponsored, uh, has introduced legislation. California has introduced it. But we want to try to make sure here in the Great Lakes region, we get all the states around the Great Lakes to introduce this legislation because we are finding large quantities of this in our Great Lakes. Okay. 
Senator Skindle, thanks for stopping by to talk to us. Thank you, Mike. Well, uh, to keep up to date on the latest news from Senator Skindle and the entire Ohio Senate Democratic Caucus, check out Facebook, Twitter, and OhioSenate.gov. Thanks for watching Ohio in Focus.